Welcome to the Agility in Real Life podcast, To Be Named. Now your hosts, Mike Studeman and Jeff Lee. Well, hello and welcome back to episode number three of our podcast, Yet To Be Named. Uh, Mike, if you could boil today's topic down into a sentence, what is it? I would say the headline on today's episode, Jeff, is distributed scrum can work or scrum with remote teams can work but it's gonna require a lot more discipline. So as you know, Jeff, we got a big snowstorm coming here in the Twin Cities this week. We do, it's an excellent time to practice uh, some remote working opportunities. Um, It's interesting that I've already seen some of my kids who are in college have some classes canceled for this week, which surprised me a bit with what we learned over the pandemic, but classes are canceled, but work's not gonna be canceled. Uh, So Mike, how do distributed teams need to work? How do they apply that discipline you're talking about? Well, I think the big thing is making sure that you're using cameras as much as possible. I mean, Jeff, as you well know, what does the Agile Manifesto say about the preferred communication mechanism? Face-to-face communication. Face-to-face communication. And we can do that as evidenced by this podcast here. We can do that even if we're in different geographies. If I'm trapped in my house due to an ungodly amount of snow and you're trapped in your house due to an ungodly amount of snow, we can still communicate if we have our cameras on. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I, I absolutely agree. And the you know, face-to-face communication, you know, what was meant in the Agile Manifesto was in 2001, mental note when that was written, right? We didn't have uh, Zoom and Teams and all these other things that are as good as they currently are. Uh, so things have gotten better. And my personal opinion is we don't need to be hard line about in the same place all the time. Uh, but Cameras on opens up so much more communication than just voices. Um, huge part of, of that distributed work and making it happen. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've so plus one to the idea that, uh, or plus one to the reminder that the Agile Manifesto was written in 2001. Certainly remote communication technology wasn't what it's like today. Uh, for those of you that might be a, a skew a little bit younger in our audience, we did have remote communication technology. It was just really, really expensive. And candidly, it didn't work that well. You'd get awkward freezes and whatnot. Uh, You know, plus one as well to, you know, being on camera, you can get that uh, nonverbal communication. I'm sure people have heard the studies, you know, 70% of your communication is nonverbal. We get to see people's facial expressions, the shrugged shoulders, uh, the rolled eyes, those types of things. Felt like I should have rolled my eyes at what you're saying there, but I was a little too late on that cue. Um, yeah, hundred percent agree. And so for your daily scrums, have the cameras on, uh, see each other. Uh, same thing, obviously sprint retrospectives. I find it probably if I had, if, if people are really reluctant to have cameras on in general, that's the one where I think you really, really need it uh, more than any other event. How your thoughts? Yeah, no, plus one, uh, to both of those. I think, you know, you also bring up a, a good point when people are reluctant to, have their cameras on, I think it's important to respectfully and courageously ask why. Um, Having done this myself, oftentimes I have the camera off because I'm trying to multitask, which as you know, we just can't do as human beings. Um, So really what a lot of people are doing when they have their cameras off is is not respecting the purpose of the meeting and respecting the contributions uh, of those around them. Yeah. And that said, we do need to also respect uh, people's personal space and personal lives and what's going on. Absolutely. Right. And and that's where team working agreements are so important. Having some ground rules for people about when cameras are important to have on, when it's okay to have them off, um, what circumstances it just makes sense. And and be aware of your teammates, understand each other's personal circumstances. Uh, It gives you an opportunity to have a lot of grace toward the, the different circumstances we're working on in our homes. Yeah, I think uh, I think the operative word there, Jeff, is grace. Uh, I would also point out that you said team working agreements. You didn't say scrum team working agreements. Whether you're doing scrum or not, you should have a team working together agreement. Uh, that is a, a concept and a tool that, that's really fundamental to just being a good team member. So I, I, I think, you know, with the snowstorm coming, Jeff, we can probably just work remotely this week as long as we agree to keep our cameras on and revisit our uh, team working the other agreements around any associated behavior. All right. 
Sounds great. Uh, for those of you in Minnesota, good luck with the snowstorm. By the time you see this, it will have been gone and there'll be another one in the forecast. Uh, for the rest of you, hopefully you've gotten some, some good tips out of this for working remotely, um, regardless of the weather. Enjoy, uh, enjoy the snow for, uh, folks. Thanks, Jeff. All right, bye, Mike. The product vision for the Agile podcast to be named later is to provide members of the Agile community with an idea that they can incorporate into their daily lives to make them more effective. We thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.